Since 2004, a radical experiment in the early years provision has been going on in Wales. At over 40 schools across the country, they've been piloting a new play-based curriculum for three to seven-year-olds. And from 2008, it will be implemented in all schools. Welcome to the foundation phase. St Mary's School in Bridgend is a foundation phase pilot setting. This programme will look at how they're encouraging creative development in their reception class. I want you to choose one of these colour um, palettes. Then you've got to find, Danielle, something that's that colour brown. I'm going to spread them out and you can choose your autumn colour. There's lots of things to choose from. Choose the one that you'd like to try and match. The foundation phase curriculum is an experiential curriculum that starts with the needs of the child. The planning in the foundation phase is very detailed um, because the number of the activities that you cover within a, a day. We take a topic-based approach. We plan many topics each week, but each topic is built upon, so there's an overview. This morning, the children made um, an autumn palette. They matched colours, chosen colours, so it was shades of green or shades of brown, shades of orange. And then they had to investigate which colours made browns. So they had a selection of yellow, red and green paint. So they investigated which colours made brown. Which two colours made the brown? What did you add? Which colours did you mix? Mm. Mm. What else? We wanted to ensure that we develop their active skills, develop their cognitive skills, and that the learning by doing and being very play orientated um, means that they also learned a range of social and community skills, as well as having very specific curricular areas of learning. When we were approached to um, take on the pilot scheme, initially I, I thought, oh gosh, I had a great fear within myself because I thought at the time things were, were good, inspections were good, results were good. But when I read the document and I could see the weaknesses that already existed within certainly my school and many other schools perhaps, perhaps on problem solving, more child-led learning, and sometimes we impose things at a too early an age. One of the biggest changes is staffing and ratio at reception. We now have a staffing of one to eight. Uh, but it's important that the staffing are used to uh, lead the learning to observe and take the children's learning on. It's not just to make the teacher's life easier. The staff here are involved in planning, delivering, um, assessing the children's needs. Um, it's very much a team effort. I wonder who can open up the child's head? Would you like to do? Which key do you think might fit in there? Have a look. Maybe Oh, well done, Erin. Oh, Martin, did you get a book out for me, Erin? This is the book of The Bear. And inside our treasure box, there's lots of materials that may look like part of this story. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. We're going to catch a big one. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, what a beautiful day. Dylan, would you have a look in the box to see if you can find some crunching, munching leaves? You have to be quiet and see if we can listen. Oh, and Dylan, can you squish them all together and make a crunching? Can you... By using creative development, for the exa example with the, uh, the bear hunt, the children's listening skills were developed, their language was developed, sequencing of story was developed, they had to work together, teamwork was very much um, involved. When they went out into the conservation area in the afternoon, they acted out the story, but they went through the splishing and sploshing, uh, the different activities and the words associated with the story, and they actually led 
the story um, um, in a creative way. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. Going to catch a big one. I'm not scared. part of, of a team we're actually involved in the planning and um, so when we planned this activity this is sort of my idea I wanted to go with this and that was fine to do that we're, we're given a lot more scope than we would have been you know sort of uh, pre-foundation really Because you're only working with eight children, you get to know them really well. Um, it's, it's just fantastic because you, you have so much more time with them and they're not overlooked, especially the quieter children who tend to sort of drift into the background. You know, they're always there with you. Outdoor activities always, they're always really good rather than being in the classroom. Hands on, anything messy anything creative and they're just really confident children who just get involved in everything and I think that's what the foundation brings. We wanted to look at what really encouraged and enthused our youngest children from all backgrounds because the curriculum had to be able to support those who needed additional learning support because they had additional learning needs at both ends of the spectrum, as well as those very able children. So we wanted a curriculum to stretch the imagination. The children like a range of activities. They like hands-on, experiential, real experiences. And you can use those um, then to develop their, their learning. Ooh, you can take your finger and you can make... You're going to make your path with your fingers. It's real chocolate, it's real ice cream. It's real cream, yes. Oh, that's it, good oh, boy. Wow. Good. I can see your path, you're going to go on a long journey. I think we need some more chocolate to make our pictures even better. Me yeah. Me yeah. Wow. A muddy puddle. Whatever we plan, there's always an element of fun. There's uh, we tr we try and use an, um, all our senses. So, for example, today they've had the opportunity to taste. The activity with the chocolate, they were make mark making, which is uh, a pre-skill to recording. Um, so it, it, it encompasses um, all areas. The discovery when they were mixing the paints, the children, they had to make brown, where they were investigating, which is a science skill. So creative development can incorporate all areas of learning. During the last three years, this school has seen a huge rise in children having English as a second language. Um, we now have nearly 40 children, which is a huge rise for an area like Bridgend. Foundation phase has been a wonderful opportunity for these children. I say this because the, um, the learning there is dependent upon a great interaction between adult and, and child, child and child, and therefore language skills and language acquisition has been much quicker than it normally would have been. Oh, you've got two tails now. Well, they've used all the uh, playthings before. They've had to go and some experience of it, and now they get the free play of it, putting it all together themselves and just seeing where they go with it.
with role play, there's no right and wrong answer. The children can lead their own learning. They can call on previous experiences and apply it um, to the situation that they're in. And what you find then is when you draw upon that um, learning experience with the children, when they come to record, that their recording work is far more creative. Um, they they're not they have no inhibitions. They they're not afraid afraid of failing. They're not afraid of something being right or wrong. They can draw on all those experiences um, in, in lots of areas. Because what we're going to do, we're going to make a small piece of felt each and then we're going to join it together to make one big piece of felt. Part of our creative curriculum, we often look to bring in artists or specialists and the lady who was working with us, she does lots of felt workshops. So the work that the children had carried out on autumn and the autumn palette and looking at autumn colours, I thought it was a nice activity for her to come in and support and use natural materials to pr produce a piece of material that reflected um, autumn. Gently, 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 slowly. That's it. Oh, look at that, look at that. The activity was an extended activity. They needed to stay on task for an extended period of time. It required the children to use fine motor skills, gross motor skills. There was the opportunity to make it um, a holistic approach to teaching. The children could count. They counted in Welsh. They counted up to ten forwards, backwards. They had to work with a partner to so develop their personal and social skills. And the children interacted really well together. I don't think the child that has gone through foundation phase and will end up in year two this year will be the same sort of child that we've had previously at the end of the year two. The transition from foundation phase to key stage two is going to be absolutely crucial because what we don't want is all the good work that has gone on in foundation phase to just get squashed into the Key Stage 2 curriculum. I think all children have definitely benefited. I think we're producing more rounded children, children that never say, I can't do it. They think their way around a problem. And you come in in the day, you have so much fun. It's a real privilege to be paid to de deliver the curriculum because the children are enjoying it, the adults are enjoying it, and you can see how much they gain from it. I think that Wales has a chance to get it right. Wales is a village compared to England and it, it has a chance to shine educationally. It is, foundation phase is child-centred. It's not a top-down model, it's a bottom-up model. And that's really, it's a privilege to be part of that. I think that uh, devolution has given us what we might say a dividend. Um, we're a laboratory now um, across the United Kingdom and I would hope that other people would look at what we're doing here, not just in England but elsewhere, just as I will continue to look to England and elsewhere for examples of best practice. Mm -hmm.